Yourself. My name is Elena Bezusi. I'm a teaching fellow at the Bartlett School of Planning and I have worked previously as a sort of uh, planning support for community organizations and uh, also with uh, Just Space, which is an umbrella London-wide uh, network of organizations who are involved in uh, planning housing uh, campaigns. Um, and this is what I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. But the case from London uh, and why it is a positive case, because in a way it tries to bring together all that is available at the moment for communities. Uh, so the community right to build, community land trust and the neighbourhood plan to basically shape uh, the possibility for the local authorities to make decisions uh, over what happens on a plot of land. The neighbourhood plan can set policies, but it's still in the power of the local authority to decide whether development takes the form that is in the plan or not. So the area that I'm talking about is called Camley Street, is uh, at the north of Somerstown, uh, which Sue talked about, and is very close to King's Cross, which is now uh, almost completed and is one of the largest regeneration site, property-led regeneration sites in uh, Europe. So uh, the Camley Street area is um, squeezed between Railway Canal and has survived as a council-owned land uh, used by uh, light industrial businesses and uh, uh, food industries uh, and uh, housing. It's a mixed uh, tenure. Uh, housing. Uh, so the two areas are split by Camley Street itself uh, and clearly given the location Camley Street industrial side, uh, the kind of industrial side of Camley Street has been um, under kind of, uh, sort of very close to being targeted for um, housing development. Uh, for luxury housing development, given its proximity to King's Cross, given its proximity to um, um, King's Cross station and the Argent uh, King's Cross site redevelopment. Uh, the process as it has come to be today was triggered by the businesses uh, being um, kind of worried about being displaced. So here we talk about a form of gentrification that target businesses and target industrial uses. That area was obviously in council and it was council owned um, and it was the kind of responsibility or uh, right of the council if you want to make um, the most out of that land. Uh, and as we know, that is potentially a big trigger for local authorities to sell land at the highest profit. So the community, uh, um, community street um, neighborhood plan um, and was set up together uh, in a nested way with the community um, um, land trust. Yeah, with the Cam sorry, with the Camley Street Community Land Trust, the community, the Camley Street Neighbourhood Plan and the Camley Street uh, Community Land Trust came to be together, and the main purpose of that was, as Sue said, to use the Neighbourhood Plan to fix the type of development that was potentially possible on that site, and therefore to fix the value of the land. So developers would always pay the value of the land or based on what they can develop on the land. If the neighbourhood plan, which is now emerging, which means it's been submitted, uh, fix what's going to happen on the plan, it means that the value of the land is also fixed. The community land trust, on the other hand, has been shaping for the past 18 months and now submitted an offer for the purchase of the land. The offer for the purchase of the land is 135-150% more than what the land is value according to the neighborhood plan. So basically the community land trust is outbid itself um, and if a developer comes in can only offer that much and if the council makes a different decisions towards the development of the site a judicial review can be triggered in favor of the community land trust. So the community land trust has set the rules and then it's outbid itself on that rule. <coughs> Basically locking in the council potential decisions on what happens on that land. Nothing can happen on that land unless it's what the community land trust wants 
and the community land trust wants to redevelop the sites, keeping the businesses and adding affordable housing and affordable in a meaningful way. And the uh, neighborhood plan sets those also in planning policy. So in a way, this is a very clever, but very complicated also, and very resource intensive way to lock in a development. The key ingredient here is obviously the resources, the financial resources, because the community land trust would not be able to bid in excess of a land value in London without support. Um, that support has come through a uh, kind of range of institutional investors and uh, uh, philanthropic uh, money. But it's worth pursuing because um, affordable housing, even in a meaningful way, uh, is a historically um, rewarding, financially rewarding enterprise because uh, housing, after it's paid for itself around 30 years, it becomes a steady revenue. So the council would win the revenues from the housing, the community land trust would win you know, its own bid to build and the businesses would be able to stay. So it's worth thinking uh, outside the box and also worth thinking about uh, where the finance for uh, affordable housing can come from. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I now have five minutes to talk about this because I used the time. Um, so um, what you see here is the first page of a kind of long document um, that is called the um, Community Led Plan for London. So this session is called Organiza Organizing for Change, and I'm trying to explain both what change and which kind of organization. So um, the change uh, that this document is trying to uh, trigger uh, comes from the acknowledgement that in a context like London, and the London Plan is a strategic document, um, but also under a mayor whose powers uh, in terms of delivery and implementation are increasing, um, the type of change cannot be achieved through uh, the uh, involvement of community organizations once the plan is prepared. Uh, for over 12 years, the London plan has been kind of been altered and community organizations have been involved in trying to uh, respond to the proposed alterations, but that has been very frustrating and uh, unsuccessful. So with uh, the latest uh, changes, the inspectors has agreed uh, together with communities and even with the, the, the GLA itself that this, the London plan is basically not fit for purpose as a plan. It needs to be restarted. And this is where this document comes from. It's a manifesto for ideas and recommendation of how the London plan uh, should be delivered how the London plan should be prepared and on a range of um, topic. Um, um, it's an effort to shape and to inform the narrative on which London is based. London is a narrative of being the successful city, uh, but London is much more than, uh, or probably much less than successful. London has a lot of uh, housing inequalities, uh, income inequalities, economic um, inequalities in access and in the diversity of um, access to employment. Uh, so the plan is really, uh, this, this plan is really an effort to move away from the main, this mainstream narrative and introduce uh, a more democratic uh, process um, in the formation of an ideas, the ideas that inform the beginning of uh, the London plan. Uh, so it's, around, it's organized around a number of sections uh, about public participation and how that should be uh, shaped. Um, it has a large section on what the London economy is made of, what the London economy uh, should be, again moving away from the narrative of the big corporate industries that have the capacity to influence these ideas uh, around finance sectors and uh, um, service sectors. Uh, so trying to shape uh, the ideas around the London econ economy, 
um, shaping ideas around housing and linking it to health and well-being, um, the, the kind of um, providing a wider alternative for uh, housing provisions, uh, community-led housing policy and also regulating the private rented sector. Um, there are issues around uh, green and, uh, sorry, I'm just going through the titles. And, um, and, and, um, the, and transport. So what kind of organization sits behind the preparation of this document? Um, this document is, uh, comes under the umbrella of just space, but is the collective uh, effort of and voluntary contribution of over a hundred organizations in London, uh, of which uh, Just Space has been, if you want, the facilitator for mutual uh, help and uh, shared uh, discussions. This particular document emerged over the last 18 months uh, through two London-wide community conferences and several uh, thematic workshop around the themes that you have seen. Um, these organizations are uh, both uh, addressing local issues but also London-wide issues. They are both management organizations, they are neighborhood plans, they are campaigns, they are struggles uh, around issues of uh, housing uh, particularly um, and as I say the uh, information, inf informing the ideas around uh, the economy of London. Um, so, the, kind of to come uh, to a close, I mean, the change that this plan is proposing is that the narrative about London has to change. If we leave the preparation of the plan to the GLA and to the big corporate business, nothing will ever change. So the contribution has to start by changing and if, you know, the understanding of what London is and what London could be. Because if we don't change that, uh, that is not going to change. And in terms of the organization, the experience of Just Space is that uh, change can only come if everybody is part of that change, if all as many organizations as possible are part of that change. It cannot come from a selected group of thinkers. And it, the, the effort of Just Space is to allow all these organizations to talk to each other, to have a voice. Just Space doesn't have its own voice. It's a space for community organizations in London to have a voice and to share that voice and to put strength into that voice. Um, so the, the, the way it is organized is uh, a, a network of organizations that help each other in the preparation of the London plan and in a number of local issues. So it's really a mutual support which has facilitated this um, document. Um, if you, this document is available for download. It is at justspace.org.uk. Uh, it's... Um, uh, written in a way that is uh, understandable uh, because it's written by people who are concerned about communicating their ideas uh, and not just uh, doing gobbledygook um, or very technical jargon uh, language. I have some copies here of the printed uh, document and um, please ask me any questions now or during any future workshops. Great. Thank, Thank you. you.